What's up, everyone? Welcome to number 41 of our kind of breakfast training talk. I have my, actually, my pot of coffee being warmed up right now. I got a French press going, going on today, so I gotta heat the water up. But whatever, you don't care about that. You care about the training talk about this. So today's discussion point is gonna be around functional exercises. Functional movements, training, methods, whatever it might be, the word functional specifically. And we got to remember, as always, functional, before I go any further, is contextual. Right? What is functional for a scuba diver is very different than what's functional for a distance runner. What's functional for a body fil build builder, body builder, body builder, is different than what is functional for, say, a power lifter or even a sprinter. Now, there always might be some overlap, but for the most part, function is contextual. Okay, now that going forward, and appreciating that, I even want to dive into the idea of functional. And at times, people use a more broader brush for functionality. And that is, is an exercise func innately functional, right? Functional in terms of our daily life, our living, and so on and so forth. And typically, you get this idea that we should squat, we should hinge, we should press, we should pull. And we call those kind of like, you know, functional or whatever the heck you want to call them. Beneficial. I don't know. We'll use the word functional for now. But the idea of that is, is a little misleading because if you label something functional by default, you're labeling something else as at least not being functional. So it's not dysfunctional, it just might not be functional. And there's a reason why I have some questions about that because if we, again, this is a little bit of a thought experiment, so hang in there with me. If we think about life and daily life and whatever, and we think about things we do commonly as what is functional, how often do we ever actually squat? Not much, right? Maybe getting up off a chair, uh, so on and so forth. Now, even if we go back in caveman days, how often do we squat in caveman days? You know, you might be in a squatting position, but that's different than squatting, right? A squatting position to poop is very different than a squatting position to lift 500 pounds. So by default, maybe being in a squatting position is functional, but maybe squatting with weight is not. Right? I can't imagine anything other than a deadlift being the one movement pattern you might see in nature where you actually have to lift something heavy. If you think about it, I'm not really sure if I encountered anything in nature as I look around the house as if something in the house is going to remind me of nature. I do have a plant right here, so it's kind of nature-like, but like whatever, you get the idea. I'm not sure anything in nature I'd ever see me like, oh, I'm going to squat that. You know, in order to lift something, it's always going to be grounded. Nothing's going to be, you know, on a rack for you to squat. It's going to be on the floor. You're going to pick it up probably like a deadlift because you're not going to be able to step inside of it. It'll be in front of you, so you got to pick it up like a deadlift, like an atlas stone for those power strong men, I should say. Now, I'm not here to argue what is and isn't functional. I'm just trying to think about the idea of labeling things, especially in regards to, you know, using words that proclamate its importance over others, right? Calling something functional, I mean, implies kind of whatever other thing isn't functional. And I think they're all kind of functional. It's actually, my statement is lots of movement patterns are functional. It depends on what you're trying to do, what you're trying to accomplish, determine its function. However, we should also consider patterns that we see in daily life as maybe being something we should not necessarily patterns I should say that's not the right word um we should say movement uh producing eh, motor skills how about that that's kind of a loophole of a word in other words we should look at significant areas that decline with age we're thinking about functionality for longevity I think things like the ankles, the hips, and the knees are very important, but that of power development actually happens to be very functional at that standpoint because we've shown and we, as if I've done the research, people who've researched and people who read research like myself are two different people, but the researchers have shown and I have read that um, essentially power training can be helpful for long-term healthy aging. And so therefore that might be functional. So power training maybe is a type of training, but then the targeted muscles by the knees, ankle, hips, heck, maybe things like you know, so your obliques and other aspects of your core, your low back are very, 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 I cannot speak today, are very beneficial. Um, but the idea is that how we label things is very important. And I want us to think about situations whenever we paint with a broad brush, 
what else we might be covering with that broad brush. And when we're painting with a very fine tipped pen, what are we missing out with a fine tip pen? And it comes back down to how we think as people, how we interpret information and how we digest it. Because a lot of times what happens, we get into a situation of playing operator. That's not the right word, playing telephone. Remember telephone, the game where you sat down next to people and it was like, maybe you did in school and he was like, I don't know, 12 y'all in a circle. And then you would say, you know, some funny sentence like, we're going to have popcorn for lunch. And then you whisper in someone's ear, if you don't hear it right, you say operator and they'll say it again. By the time it gets to the 12th kid, they're gonna say, we are, are going to have popcorn punch or something, right? The, the word, the sentence is slightly off. So what happens is as information gets extrapolated from person to person, certain bits get added in and taken out and twisted and turned. So the original source of information is probably somewhat there. The core of it is probably the majority of it's there, but it's been so twisted and turned that it might not really be the same, which is why when we think about labeling things, I promise you I'll tie this full circle, we got to be careful because we label something. You might be labeling it for a specific reason, and you also cannot control how people interpret all your information. But by painting with such a broad brush or narrow tip pen, we might run the issue of over you know, extrapolation or over communication and miscommunication would be a better word to actually describe what's happening. So again, we were thinking about functionality, functional, contextual, and that is the core root that we need to hang on to, that function. What is functional is contextual to the situation. What is functional really depends on the person, the event, and the outcome. Um, well, I guess the desired outcome. And so the more we remember that, the better off I think we can be when interpreting other bits of information that are pertaining to how someone labels or not labels a movement functional. So that's my two cents on it. I know it's kind of a roundabout way of getting there, but I appreciate y'all listening and I hope you enjoy this. As always, take care, subscribe, like, and follow along this page. It's episode 41. We're aiming for 100 of these. I'm going to do my best to keep them rolling. I appreciate y'all as always. Thanks for listening.